figuring out whether a denial of service attack will succeed is really based on whether you did a good job earlier planning out the network, looking at the systems, taking a really deep inventory of the services that are on different servers, where those services are and where those servers are, what they what they support, understanding what the intermediate devices are, the manufacturer, the model number, and so forth. Getting a really good, complete, rich map early during the enumeration and footprinting processes, that's a critical component because that tells you whether you've got anything that you can conduct a denial of service attack on in the network. And if you can, it tells you what to attack where to attack it. These machines are web servers. These are switches. These are clients that are vulnerable to this type of attack or that type of attack. The web front end might be very, very resilient, but the database server may not be resilient. And the database server is over here and it looks like this and it services these ports. The easiest thing to do is take that network map, that nefarious network map, that catalog of hosts and devices and research that to look for unpatched vulnerabilities or even patch vulnerabilities that where the patch level doesn't match what you've found. So rather than brute force flooding a server, you may only need to really give it a certain type of traffic or a certain header of, of data to actually conduct a denial of service attack instead of having to flood the entire network uh, or just ram traffic down the server's throat or the service's throat, you may only need to construct very specific queries. You may need to you know, construct an email that just has an attachment that happens to be really large, and that's enough against this service with this service level and patch level to actually bring it down. I will mention here that conducting a denial of service attack against a target server, if a target server has a number of services on it, you're actually attacking not just the service, but you're attacking the host itself. So potentially attacking, let's say, a domain controller that's also running a web server and is also running an email server, well, great. If you can bring one of those services down or make it consume too much resource, you could potentially affect the other services so you may not be able to flood the Active Directory side, but if you can flood the email side to consume all system resources, you've brought down a domain controller. That's an interesting aspect that I'll demonstrate in a moment. 